gonna do a little spillway fishing today this little front's fixing to roll through and I got a feeling they're gonna start biting any minute now water's flowing good out of this little hole there's minnows everywhere oh there he is nice that's so cool I love fishing this spot and he looks like he's gonna be a keeper yeah, he's a keeper for sure. Nice. Gonna add him to the stringer. <laughs> Been out here for a little bit. I didn't want to record until I knew they were biting. But, that's five or six. Gotta hide the fish from the people as they drive by. So nice, got him. Golly, they're fighting hard today. What do we got here? That looks like a keeper. Oh, don't let him go in the water. Yeah. Oh, nope. It's okay, little buddy. It will, it'll be over before you. Know. Hope y'all are enjoying the video. I got a question from a subscriber last week wanting to know how Jesus and the Holy Spirit fit into the first commandment and how the Trinity can be one God. It can be confusing for someone new to the concept, but I'll give you all my best explanation and hope it can help someone watching better understand it. So I'll start with the first commandment. Exodus 23, you shall have no other God but me. He is the one and only God, so how can Jesus and the Holy Spirit be worshipped as God and it be okay? Jesus and the Holy Spirit are not separate from the Father. They are all the same God, just the different ways He interacts with us. Jesus Himself makes it clear that He was God. Jesus told the disciples, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, so why are you asking me to show Him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. John 14, 9 through 10. This means they are one and the same. John also wrote, In the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and darkness can never extinguish it. John 1, 1 through 5. John tells us that Jesus, referred to here as the Word, is a part of God the Father. Two of the three ways He interacts with us in the universe, and He has existed with God as God since the beginning of time meaning that no other God but me encompasses his three forms. After his resurrection, Jesus reiterated his position with the Father. Jesus came and told the disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 18-20 If the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit weren't all the same God, Jesus would not have told us to do things in the name of all God's forms. Also, He is with us to the end of the age because the Holy Spirit whom He sent to us after returning to the Father is Himself in a different form. It is His presence living in those whom He has chosen to take His message to the ends of the earth. Through the Spirit, Jesus was able to do miracles, and through the same Spirit, He did miracles through the disciples and in our time today. Jesus said, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Advocate, who will never leave you. He's the Holy Spirit, who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive Him because it isn't looking for Him and doesn't recognize Him, but you know Him because He lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you will also live. John fourteen sixteen through 19 This means the Spirit is also part of God the Father and is the way He interacts with us today. But why do we need Jesus? Can't I just 
get to God by doing good things? No, we are in need of a mediator between God and man. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with Him without keeping the requirements of the law. As was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in His grace freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when He freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed His life, shedding His blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when He held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For He was looking ahead and including them in what He would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate His righteousness, for He Himself is fair and just, and He makes sinners right in His sight when they believe in Jesus. Romans 3, 20-26 I pray this gave you all some understanding on the subject. I know it's a lot to grasp and doesn't make sense unless God opens your eyes to it, and for that reason, if it made sense to you and you have not given your life to Him, I pray that you would do so because He is reaching out to you. If you have questions about how it works, I'd like to answer them, so please reach out in the comments on Instagram or Facebook, or watch my Portal Connor Texas Slam video. I explain how to do so in it. Thanks for watching, and please stay tuned for more Fishing with a Mission.